Hello everyone and welcome to today's recording. My name is Roy and today I'll be showing what you can do with the Postgres database and StepSend using the StepSend CLI. What we'll be doing is combining data from different tables into one GraphQL query. For this we'll be using, of course, Postgres SQL and also we'll be using StepSend GraphQL Schema Design Language to combine data either using the raw queries or by combining the data using the custom directives that we've built to combine data from various sources. So we'll be using the CLI to import a Postgres database. And to get a Postgres database, you can have a look at our projects directory on StepSend. So in this repository, you can find different examples, including an example that uses a Postgres database. And in here, you can either find a database that we run for you in the cloud with uh, some pre-populated data, or you can find instructions to create a local database using Docker. So today we'll be taking the database that we've set up here and we also will be connecting this using the Postgres CLI at first to see what data is in there. Before we actually will be importing um, the schema of this Postgres database and convert it to a GraphQL schema using the steps in CLI. So let's take a fresh terminal and in here we will be connecting to the Postgres database. And we can do this using a connection string in the Postgres CLI. And then of course we need to provide a password, which we have in our examples repository. Copy paste this password, go back to our terminal, press enter. And then we should be seeing that we are connected to the database. We can use this backslash dt command to see all the relationships that are in there. So what we'll be doing today is combining data from the orders table and the products table um, into one query. And for this, we need to use the line item table, which has information about both orders and products, because we can have a look at the orders table. We can say public order where ID is one. So let's suppose we have a look at the order with ID one. There is no information about the product here because the information about the product is in, well, first the line item table in which you can find the product IDs. And then we should be going to the select from product, an example where ID is one. So this is the way to get the product now. So you need to have three separate queries. You need to get the order information. You need to get the line item. And then we should get the product information as well. Of course, you can combine this all in one query. So let's say we want to select, I don't know, maybe p.title and p.description from public. Product, let's call P. Uh, we also should get the information from public dot order. Let's call it O. And then we should get information from public dot line item. Let's call it T, where of course everything starts with getting the order dot ID is one. And then we should combine the order tables because we should combine the order table with line item, which we can do using o dot id is t dot order id. Um, so this will combine the order with the line item table, and then we should combine the product table uh, with the line item table as well. So we can do where t dot product id. So this is the line item table, which has the product id. Product ID is p.id, which is the product table. And you can see we have some confusion in there. I forgot to add a comma. I can do it here. And as you can see, this will get the data um, for two products, the foldable swimming pool, and then something else in here. There's a second row. As you can see, we have two rows. So this will get both the product information for product ID one and two. So this is how you do it using a raw SQL query. 
But of course, today we'll be using StepSend to create a GraphQL schema for this database. What we'll be doing here is running StepSend import PostgreSQL. And first, of course, make sure that you have the CLI installed, which I already have today. So running StepSend import PostgreSQL, it will ask us how I like to name my API, which I can do StepSend with PostgreSQL. It will ask me several questions like, what is my host? Well, I already know what my host is because if I would be going back to the repository with all the examples for steps and in here, you can see we have a host name, we have a database, and we also have the password. I combine this, I have my database name in here as well. It's inspection. I have a test user called test user inspection. And then I should get my password as well. Hurricane starting temple 1934. Insert this right here. And then it will ask us an important question. Do you want to automatically link types based on foreign key relationships using a materializer? So this means that StepSend will automatically look for possible combinations of data inside your database. So let's try and do yes. Uh, it will ask us about the database schema. Uh, if you want to use the default, which is public for this Postgres database, you can just leave this blank. And then it will start generating the schemas based on the Postgres database. As you can see, it created a GraphQL file for us, including information about product, um, about order, and you can see also for line item. And you can also see the combination it has made for us. So it will help us to get the order information uh, based on this. And it will also ask, show us how to get the customer and the line item list for orders today. So I just run steps and start. And this will create a new GraphQL API for me on a endpoint, either on my account or on a public URL in case you haven't signed up for StepSend. In this scenario, I haven't signed up yet, so I can either log in via stepsend.com or I could continue without logging in. So this will create a public endpoint, meaning that your data isn't secure. Uh, your database credentials are secure because we have this configuration.jml file, only the data won't be secure because we have a public endpoint, which is fine for now as we will be recording this for demo purposes. Let's be going to this endpoint. Wait, copy paste it. I didn't. Go back here, uh, copy it, see. Then go back to my browser, Ctrl V. So this will take me to a graphical interface in which I can get the order information. And as you can see, I can already get the order information for product one uh, using this query that steps in generated for me. Uh, but you can see the relationship is being created using this line item list, meaning that we don't have a one-by-one -one connection with the line item. Instead, we need to create this uh, by hand because now the information is linked to line item, which has product information, and then also has order information. But this, of course, isn't ideal because I want to flatten the results. I want to get products instead of getting information from a line item list. So what we need to do there is we need to create some new information in our schema. So the way we do this is by creating a new query. Um, an example type, oh, like get products um, from order. using order ID. So this could be our query. So we want to get products, um, a little bit long. Let's just say just get products using order ID. For this, of course, we need to give an ID and we want to return products. Um, there are multiple ways we could do this. As we saw before, we can create a raw query, which will look something like this. So I can copy paste this from page and also I'm not going to comment this and I'm going to this one. Bring it up a bit. 
So this is one way. So we'll be getting products from using order ID, which meaning we have a raw SQL query that combines information from product um, with line item. And then based on the order ID, it will give us the products. Because now we have no way to get the product information directly. Instead, we need to get a product information through the line item setup. And if we save this, we can see this API has already been deployed, this new schema. And we can just go back to our GraphQL playground. Refresh this page, update this information. So what we can do now is get products using order ID. Of course, we need to set the ID to one. And then we can get the title and description. So this is one way to get a product using order ID, but it uses a raw SQL, which is something we maybe don't want. But first, let's us connect this up to the order type. So in here we can say products, products which we want to combine using a materializer but first save this and then we can just save this because the order id will automatically be forwarded uh, to our field there um query let's put this as uppercase i and then save it and then we can see get products reference query does not exist here, get products using order ID to just copy paste this here. Save it. Get a copilot almost saved my day, but didn't completely do it. Um, and now I can see I already flattened the result. What I'm doing here is instead of using the line item list to get the products, I can now just do products. and get the title description. Save this, this will also get my data. And then now I no longer need to combine line item list like this. I can just get the data easily like this. But what I've done here is creating a raw Postgres SQL to get this information for me. But maybe, just maybe, you're not that uh, familiar with Postgres because you don't want to create raw SQL queries in here, you actually want to use GraphQL schema design language to make this powerful combinations for you. So what I'll be doing then, I will just get rid of this DB query and I will be using a add sequence uh, custom directive we've created with StepSend. So what we do in here, we need to combine several steps. So we need to get a line item using order ID, which is another query we have in here. So put this in here as well, F this. You can see we have a query that was auto-generated for you, which will get line item fields by using the order ID. And then with sequence, we'll be taking the result of this one to get a product, which is another query we have in here to get a product by its ID. So this way we can combine the data using just GraphQL schema design language instead of having to, raw, to create a raw query. And then there's one other thing we need to do we need to add a collect query, which is a query that will collect data for you um, using this connector and will flatten it to make sure you have all this information in one place. And you can see there's all the fields that we need uh, from get product and collect them and combining them get products using order ID. So if I save this and I go back to my settings here, you can see I can still get the products using order ID in the same way I've did before, but this way I'm using just GraphQL schema design language. And then in the same way, I can also get the products for my order. So if I refresh this, it will get the order uh, orders products now using GraphQL schema design language instead of the raw process query. You can see we've got some uh, red line here, but this is just because the GraphQL IDE doesn't refresh on the background. So if I refresh the page, you can see the red lines will also be gone because my schema is valid. Otherwise, the GraphQL CLI would have thrown me an error instead. Wait for the GraphQL IDE to refresh. 
and then you can see the red lines will be gone. In my CLI, everything is deployed. And then if I go back to my browser, feel my internet speed might be lacking a bit. Refresh again. And then you can see we don't have the red lines anymore. So this is just one of the few powerful things you can do with StepSend using just GraphQL schema design language, meaning you no longer have to write raw queries, maybe because you don't, elect, you don't have the knowledge about SQL, or maybe because you want your setup to be more composable. So if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel, and that way you will get notified when the next video will be out there. So with this, I like to end, and I hope to see you again next time.